guys, welcome. Um, so happy you guys got to keep, got to um, come to our presentation. Uh, so we're going to be talking a little bit about who are the minority students today. Um, I'm Jennifer Marquin. This is. I'm Devontae Burrell, and we both graduated here about like 2016. Yeah, we're class of 2016. So. This is our home. Hi, sorry. No problem. Guys, that is it, like the circle area, so we can have like a discussion based type thing. We can all talk to each other. We like friends. I like friends. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's true. Um, okay. okay. Um, so, I was, as we were saying, I'm Jennifer Marquin. And this is Devante. Um, so, before we even get started with our presentation, um, we think it's really important that you guys get to know one another and of course us because this is we're trying to make this presentation you know opinion based back and forth we do want you guys to communicate with one another especially um for this topic so before anything we have to establish some sort of connection with one another okay um so right now we're just going to get to know a little bit about each other we're going to go around the room state your name uh your class you, or the, the, um, the year you're going to graduate, um, something special about you, unique. Um, it could be a favorite movie, um, I don't know where you work, something really interesting so we can establish a connection with you guys, okay? Um, so I guess we can start. Um, my name is Jennifer, of course you guys know that. My mom calls me Jen, so like my friends as well. Um, currently, I go to Westchester University. Uh, my major is um, communications. Uh, I have a, I'm doing two minors, which is Spanish, of course, and um, international business as well. Okay. Um, something unique about me is I love to watch TV. I can't explain. Maybe that's why I'm a comm major now. But I love to watch TV. Ugh, I love it. <laughs> now you know. I'm Devante. We already established that. Um, I go to Westchester too, and I'm a communicate. I'm a double major and a double minor, so I'm a communication and media and culture major, and I'm a deaf studies and psychology minor. Um, an interesting fact about me is that I know sign language, so I have a, that was my first language, so I have that. Um, you want to start over here? Yo, um, my name is Jocelyn. I'm class of 2019. Um, something unique about myself is. Um, I like to eat. <laughs> I mean, one. who doesn't? <laughs> okay. Hello, my name is Miguel. I'm um, class 2019 as well. Um, something you need to love me. Um, I don't know. <laughs> 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 you yeah. uh, I love to dance. I, mean, I was in a dance group. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Something interesting that I know about you, Miguel, which might seem kind of weird, is I'm really good friends with your grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's seen, weird. But... On Facebook, my granddaughter. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm really good friends with this guy. Yeah. She's like yeah. literally like my grandmother. I love my grandmother. Yeah, your grandmother is so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my name is Jennifer. I'm a class of 2019. I don't know something interesting or unique about me. Probably. No um, pressure. Who's your favorite teacher? That's a hard Is it really? Yeah, I had a hard time. Okay. No pressure. You can go on to the next person. Uh, I'm Josh. Uh, I'm class 2018, and uh, I love to play sports. I don't know where it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, my name is Diana. I'm class of 2020. And something interesting about me is I'm class president. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I'm Geraldine. I'm also class of 2020. And something about me is that I don't know. I really like to dance. We have dancers. Hola. Hola. Hi. Uh, my name is Francis Cruz. I teach here at the high school. They call me Miss Cruz. <laughs> I'm from Honduras. I have a master's in Spanish literature. And my minor was in French. Um, I've been teaching Spanish for about 20 years, awesome. and I have a little one, four years old. Um, I love teaching, I love dancing, and reading. That's awesome, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, my name is Eliza, I'm graduating this year, so class is really. And 
um, I'm thinking so like after high school I want to like be in the medical field so mm -hmm. I want to study like science-based majors in college. Yeah. Fun fact, Westchester is very good for their nursing program, so if you want to do like any type of nursing So those are other schools, not <laughs> only Well, Westchester is known for their nursing program. It has a big nursing program. I forgot. She's my student. And she was my student. Oh! Oh, my name is Julian Campbell. I was class of 2017, so last year. And one interesting fact is that I wrote a book. And Miss Cruz was my teacher. She taught me her first year here. Wow. Sorry, I think you remind me of someone. Do you have an older sister? Because you're right here. Oh, I know her. <laughs> oh, great. Great. Awesome. Oh. Okay. Uh, my name is oh. Jason. I'm a junior right now. And I love to exercise. Awesome. We should all exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go ahead? Uh, my name is Nisle and I'm class of 2019. And I don't know what I'm going to get. I guess drawing. Awesome. Thank you guys. <laughs> what happened? We have to log in. Oh. You have to log in? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, with Mrs. Torres. Honestly, it's fine. We can just follow through. She should leave her password with us. Yeah. <sighs> I wouldn't even say yeah. We can reference your laptop or whatever. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, it's can you here. send her a yeah. message? Yeah. So she can know what's up here Um, so, while we wait for Taurus, we're just going to move along to the presentation. Um, we apologize about that. Um, so, um, what I have in one of the slideshows is, um, what is the definition of minority? Um, what do you guys think? Something minor, okay. <laughs> that works. Anything else? In a social aspect. We talk size and wise, so like there's yes. major and then minor. So we know it has to be something small, like a small amount of something. Like yeah. um, ethnic groups? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, so um, just to let you guys know, the, um, the definition of minorities is a section of group of people um, which are less than 50% of the total population um, in a particular region or um, in a region with less political, social, economic, and cultural impact in society, um, and which are dominated by the majority, of course. Okay, so um, so going back to some of the questions that I have is um, basically minorities are a group of ethnic. Um, thank you. <laughs> we don't know the password. We need tours for her password. I just texted her, but I brought it. I like that. Okay, thank you. Um, so it's a group of ethnic, um, it's an ethnic group which is not very common in a certain population. Um, an example of that would be um, at Westchester, there's a minority group and Devonte and I are part of that minority group at Westchester currently. Okay, we are um, part of like probably the 5%. Yeah, and we don't really see any collaboration between any other groups. Yeah. Like, for, for example, I'm black, I'm African American, and typically at Westchester, all the um, African American black people hang out at the bottom. We have like our own like place for, like it's called Multicultural Affairs, and they just all hang out there and don't really go anywhere else. Um, so when you have, whenever you walk on campus of Westchester, you will see mostly white people, and you won't really see like the minority groups because they have their own spaces and they tend to stay in their spaces. Also, we feel as though because we are the minority group, we feel as though we can establish a connection with them because they are the majority. We see most of the culture on campus. You won't see a Mexican flag around campus or a flag from Ecuador or a flag from China, you see. So we are, Devante and I are representing the minorities at, currently at Westchester. Um, how do you think we feel being the minorities 
on campus. Intimidated? Yes. yes. Do you feel like you stand out? Okay, that's, yeah, yeah. that's true. Anything else? Think about it when you go, in, you go into this room and you don't know anybody there. Left out? Mm -hmm. Judge? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there any like personal experiences y'all have? Because I can tell an example of a personal experience for me, <laughs> if y'all don't have one. Of, of racism? No, well, of not racism. <laughs> of feeling like a minority group or feeling like a minority in a predominantly like white space. Yeah. Yeah, I think we all go through that, mm -hmm. especially when we were like in a group. For example, like you know, you just have to go into school and you stay there, and you feel like mm -hmm. so uncomfortable. You know to have you been to um, uh, college or whatever university tours yet? Mm -hmm. yeah. How did how did that feel? Weird, because in the ones that I've gone, it was like out of the mm -hmm. fifty, it was like. A couple Mexicans, Latinos. Mm -hmm. I have yet to see a Mexican person at Westchester. <laughs> oh my God! I mean, I see many black people because I hang out at the multicultural <laughs> office. But yeah. um, yeah. So whenever you go to colleges, you have to think about the tour, like the tour people, like who are giving the tours, and you realize that not many people who are a part of a minority group are of are giving the tours. Like for me. My tour guide and orientation leader was both white. You don't really see like minorities actually going out of that bubble. And if you do, it's like one or two out of the whole thing. So, yeah. We're not saying the majority, being a majority in a certain um, population is bad. No. We're just saying that we're being underrepresented yeah. in those, in, in that type of environment. That's what we're saying. Yeah. yeah. We, we don't mean to offend any uh, community or anything, we're just stating what we see and what we experience. We're not trying to you know, disrespect them at all. We're just trying to give you our side of what we experienced. Okay. Um, so, does, talking to the students, um, do you guys have plans after graduation? Yeah. Do you guys want to go around and tell us what are your plans? Yeah. Guess go around. <laughs> <laughs> um, plan on going to a four-year college. Okay. So how many others are planning to go for, to a four-year college? Okay. Okay. Um. What other options are there? Who after high school? What are you planning to do? All oh, y'all raised your hand for four year college this year? Well, I was, sorry, uh, I was planning on like going to Monco for two years. Uh -huh. And that's a good, that's a really good option because Monco is frankly cheaper. Yeah. And we don't really have the, not all of us have the resources to pay for a four year college. Like for me, <laughs> I barely have money <laughs> to pay for Westchester. And Westchester is a predominantly cheap school, but I chose that. But Monco is a really good option. Plus, it's not a really a bad school, it's really good. Um, um, so what resources do you think you would need at those colleges? Like, what do you want for your college that you're choosing to go to? Like, do you need, for example, would you like a college that has a space for people of your ethnic group? Like, for Westchester, they have the Multicultural Affairs Office, and, like, that type of space. Do you need financial aid? Do you need, like certain groups that they have, like at Westchester we have a group called Lasso, and that's like Latino American student offices or, affair, or whatever, um, and that's a pretty big group, or for a club that I'm vice president called Saga, Sexuality and Gender Alliance. Like what resources would you need at that school? What clubs would you like to see and be a part of at that group, school you're choosing? Do you know? For me, I'm gonna go to Lincoln in the fall. That's the HBCU, so it's predominantly black. So um, I know that I don't, I'm not gonna have a problem fitting in. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, some resources that I would need would be, um, like you said, that um, financially probably 
well, not just me, but like just overall professionals, some of the academic advising, mm -hmm. um, just different. Maybe like a, I know they have like an African, African um, like awareness group, mm -hmm. like where they teach you about your culture and stuff like that. And like they have um, Negro women associate on um, like Negro women for law or something like that. It's like. Basically, all the clubs there's like motivation for black people, stuff like that. Yeah. Anyone else? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we see you guys have plans, which is great. You know, that's actually the first step when um, when you think about furthering your education is having a plan. Okay. Um, so going back to furthering your education, many of you in this room are going to be first generation students, meaning that. You're going to be the first one in your family to attend an institute or a university or a trade school or whatever you you know you want to do when you, after you graduate. So being first by definition, um, it's defined as the students whose parents slash legal guardian have not completed a bachelor's degree. Uh, means that a student is first in their family to attend a four-year university or institution to attain a degree. Okay. So, who here in the room is going to be a first generation student? Yeah. I'm first. Are you first? No. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I'm not a first, first generation student. Oh, yeah, your dad went to school. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm a first generation. Many, so um, from what I know when I attended uh, the high, is many of my friends were going to be, many of them, many of them, I think majority of the, of the class was going to be first generation students. Yeah. So yeah. There's a lot of obstacles that first generation students face by this by mostly first let me rephrase that. So the minority students are actually most of them are actually first generation students. Okay? That's why they feel as though they don't fit in. That's why they they don't know a lot about how to further ed their education. Okay, so just to clarify that point, most of the minority uh, students are first generation students. Okay, so some of the obstacles that those students face are they lack college readiness, meaning they aren't prepared for um, school or where to begin. This process is long and hard. <laughs> okay, um, some of them face financial instability, meaning their parents, they come from low income families. Um, they feel racial, um, underrepresented in whether it's at school or outside of school, you know. Um, so then they face low uh, academic self-esteem because they think they aren't good enough to go to school. Okay. Uh, and just basically difficulty adjusting to college. It's hard, especially when you get there and you're like, oh man. It's a Where culture do I shock. Start? <laughs> it's literally a culture shock, it honestly. Is. There's a hierarchy of everything in college, and you have to. You're competing. Like, yeah, you're competing. It's not really a competition, but you have to like try to work hard every day, go to your classes on time, don't miss anything, make sure you get the right notes, take your test well. It's just a hard process, and not many minority group people have the resources and they can't really go to their parents because their parents don't have don't that know. experience yeah. with college and going to college so there's not much help there so they feel like there's no one to go to yeah. Yeah. so again these are some of the obstacles uh, first generation students face and starting with the first one college readiness so it's defined as the academic academic and practical knowledge needed to be successful in higher education. Um, so this means, you know, um, this if you're not ready for college or you're not ready or you weren't working hard enough at high school, this is going to affect your SAT scores, your SAT scores, SATs, ACTs, sorry, scores. Um, some research indicates that um, that first-generation test takers tend to have less core academic preparation and lower scores than later generation test takers. Meaning that I have some friends in college and I was like, what were your SAT scores? They were like, oh, I got an 1800. I got a, I got a 20, whatever. 
and someone was like, I got a 21, and I'm like, oh, what did I get? What did you get? I don't remember, but um, another thing about college readiness is high school doesn't really prep you for college. Like, how many of you are procrastinators? Because I know I am. I'm, I do everything assignment at the last minute, right? In high school, I definitely did. College doesn't really prepare you for that because if you hand in an assignment late, some professors, frankly, won't take your assignment no. at all late. And if they do take your assignment, like from one of my classes, if you hand it in on time, you get 100%. If you hand it in late, 75%. If you hand it in the class after, 50, zero. There's not really much wiggle room for that. So some professors are really strict about deadlines, totally. Yeah. Um, so college readiness, it's hard to be college ready, <laughs> especially when you're a first generation student, you feel as though you have no one to turn to sometimes. Like who's gonna help me with FAFSA? FAFSA is a whole headache itself, man. Uh, if, you're, if this is your senior year, you, you know about FAFSA, okay? Um, it's a process. It's a very long process. So we've established uh, a checklist for you guys. It's a ready for college checklist. It's basically create a plan. Um, take some challenging courses. You know, challenge yourself. That's always very important, especially in college, because you're going to be challenged all the time. Okay. There's also like jump out of your comfort zone. Like if you, because I know most colleges you have gen ed requirements. So if you have an art requirement, take a dance class. If you don't dance, take a <laughs> poetry class if you don't write poetry, acting class if you don't act. Just try to jump out of your comfort zone because you don't even know that might be your major. Yeah, you never know. Um, start thinking about your um, your dream career. I know it's kind of cliche to talk about what you want in the future, but it's really important, I think, especially to set goals for yourself. Like for me, I already know what I want to do as a career. I want to be a sign language interpreter. So I have plans prepping me for that. Like I know after I'm done at Westchester, I'm going to Washington DC to go to a predominantly deaf college to learn more sign language and learn how the process of being an interpreter. It's always nice to have a plan and have a backup plan if your first plan doesn't succeed for you. And most of uh, most most importantly, you have to take the first step. Talk to your parents about further your education. I remember when I told my mother that I mom I want to go to a four year college. And she was like, okay, but I don't know where you're going to get the money from. And I didn't have, my mom didn't have a savings account for me to go to college. <laughs> she didn't have money for me for my, um, what is it called, for my college applications. College applications are $50, maybe higher now, I don't know. But she didn't even have money for my college um, application fees. Which is good, because this school gives you free waivers. Yes. Like this weekend, she gave me a bunch of free waivers to apply to colleges and do all the whole process so mm -hmm. find your college resource go to miss weekend she's really cool i had hung out in her office the whole time so, yeah. yeah so i break up to help um save for college i know that's so hard especially if you're a spender like me and especially you know being teens we don't know what <laughs> what it's like to save money you know we have prom we gotta buy sneakers we gotta buy clothes all that. How many of you have a job? Okay. Have you all saved money for college? Like, process? Okay. So for me, when I first started working at Shenandoah, every paycheck, first off, I basically work a full-time job and go to college full-time, but every paycheck I have, I save exactly half of it, put it into my savings account for college. Um, and also, you should check and see if your college has any type of scholarship. Because I know at Shenandoah, we have a scholarship. It gave me $500. Some students this year got $1,000, $2,000. And that could really make a change for when you're going into college. So see if your, your, career, your job, not your career, let's see if your job has any type of scholarship for you. Because that's really important, especially with financial problems. Um, to our universities, I know I was just mentioning, Miguel was just mentioning that he, he just went on a tour. So that's really important, especially to know, you know, getting to know the school, if you like it. I mean, you are technically paying for this, whether you're getting loans or whether you're getting scholarships, you're still going to pay for some of it. So make sure you attend a university that you actually like, because you're not going to feel comfortable in there if you don't like university. I went on maybe 10 college tours as a senior. And Westchester was the only one I clicked with, so 
make sure you're pretty set, dead set on going to that school because sometimes transferring from another school is a difficult process and not all your credits will transfer over to that school. So you gotta make sure. Yeah. Um, keep your grades up. I know it's hard, but try to keep your grades up. Yeah. Honestly. We all go through stuff. Yeah, yeah. We all are busy. You just gotta keep on pushing so you can be successful in life. And it's really sad to say like going to college is gonna make you successful, but that's the sad reality of our world. I mean, most people have to go to college to get to where they want to be financially. So you probably should keep your, you definitely need to keep your grades up. So take your um, SATs or ACTs, um, begin your applications. It's never, it's never too early to start your applications. Especially when some applications ask you for an essay, maybe it's two to three pages. So keep that in mind. Also some colleges give you like a rolling deadline like Westchester. I'm gonna keep referencing Westchester because that's the only school <laughs> I know by the way. Um, so apply early even if they have a rolling deadline so you can know if you made it into that school early. And if you apply too late, maybe you won't get in there because so many people have applied. Mm -hmm. So you gotta make sure you apply early too. Yeah. Um, do your research, uh, seek out college advisors, begin your FAFSA. You're gonna need your parents, I think 2016, no, 2016 uh, tax returns. Depends on what year you graduate. Yeah. You're gonna need the tax returns from the year, year before. before. Okay. Um, uh, seek help if you need it, guys. If you feel lost, seek help. You're not gonna know certain things. You need to ask for help. Trust me. Yeah, like when I went here, I did. I applied to school in June. Okay. Yeah, I remember. I was very last minute <laughs> with things because I didn't know what to do. Madame helped me. Madame Shaheen, Miss Weekend helped me, and now look at me. I'm a double major and a double minor at a really good university. So again, like we just made, mentioned, um, a lot of um, a lot of students worry about where the money is going to come from. That is one. It's actually been researched that that is one of the students' main priorities when picking a university. Is where is the money going to come from? Yeah, like I said, save money. Let me tell you right now, school is not cheap. Westchester, if you're a commuter, it's like. $10,000, whereas if you stay on campus, it's 22000 And think about all the stuff you might want to buy at college, like toothbrush, books. toothpaste, books, laptop. huh? Laptop. A laptop, because a laptop is kind of necessary for college. Um, <clears throat> like for me, I'm a commuter, so I take SEPTA, and that's a trip itself, so I have to pay <laughs> every, every month for a SEPTA key pass. I have to pay $96, I have to pay for college, because I don't have financial help for my family. I basically go to school full time and then work full time. So I work approximately 72 to 80 hours a week. Oh wait, no, every two weeks, correction. So that's 40 <laughs> hours a week. And I wake up on Tuesdays and Thursdays to get to class by eight at four o'clock in the morning so I can walk a half an hour to the transportation center, take a train, then take a bus, and then do that all over again. So you gotta seek that out financial, yeah, yeah. apply for scholarships, financial aid, financial aid, financial aid, because them grants really help you, especially the STAR grant. If you're a senior, apply for the STAR grant. Is that one helped me out of some pickles right there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm funny sometimes. Um, yeah, so uh, students, especially first generations and minorities, um, they have to um, work at the same time of going and being a full-time student. So um, balancing all that is not easy. And Devante, you're an example of that. Yeah, you have to manage your time well. Like, yeah, I know organized. whenever I have a test the next day, instead of falling asleep on the bus, I'll bring up my laptop, do some papers, study, study, study. I'll just do a whole bunch of schoolwork on that, in that two-hour bus ride. And you know, students do feel the pressure. Um, wasn't there a kid that he just, didn't yeah. just committed suicide? Yeah, the, it's really the sad. Yeah. But the pressure is tough, guys. And um, yeah. yeah, he committed suicide recently. Yeah. The pressure, so it's hard. if you need help, you, there's always help. You can come to me, Jenny. <laughs> Teachers here at the high school. Yeah. 
Um, like I text Madam Shaheen sometimes in the middle. Oh yeah, me too. Look, I need, I need some advice. <laughs> like I need you to help me out a little bit here. Yeah. And Madam gives me really good advice and just so make sure you keep in contact with your former teachers because they will help you a lot. Like, they will help you a I'm lot. I'm pretty sure you helped Jody Ann with some of the problems she's yeah. facing. And, and like it's just gotta seek that help. There's definitely someone that here to help you. Yeah. Can you change the slide? Okay, so we're just going to say some facts here um, about racial um, representation. Um, as you see, predominantly in universities, as the years go by, go back to the other side. As the years go by, um, whites and Asians' um, um, enrollment into university is really increasing, while the Hispanics and the black um, community is really de um, decreasing. Because once they get to college, they face the reality that I'm under a lot of pressure, I'm really stressed, this isn't what I had in mind. I thought college was gonna be partying, school, getting drunk, you know, going to games. I have not been to a Westchester game, by the way. I, I have I'm not, not been to Westchester. Have you been to a Westchester game? No, I went to Banana Day. That's not I've been to Westchester game. parties, but not games. So. Yeah, Banana Day is a very fun day. Also, schools have like different events for typically whatever race you are. Also, going back on the last slide, they also have like resources to help de-stress you. Like Banana Day is a help way to help de-stress everybody. It's a chill day where everybody tries to win a Banana Day shirt and get bananas. It's pretty lit. <laughs> oh, they have bear bee dogs at school to de-stress people. There's many resources, but. So again, mentioning um, Hispanics and Blacks, our rates for attending university is low. Um, you know, they do feel the pressure of attending university is very stressful. Um, we totally get that, but I mean, it's up to us to increase those numbers, right? If we aren't the change, then who is? There's never going to be change without us. How are we gonna make ourselves no. Erase the stereotypes that people have about us without actually trying to make some type of change. So if these numbers keep like decreasing, decreasing of representation, then we're not really doing our jobs of making us like efficient in our like. Yeah. No. And sorry. when we're going to school, so when you guys go to school, you guys don't feel the same way or underrepresented like we do. No. Yeah, like I know. People who apply to Westchester and got into Westchester, I still see them and I say hi. So if you have people in colleges you want to go to, make sure you connect with them and ask them about how they feel in college, how how's it going, how the classes, how the professors, and just keep connected with them so you have that resource to help you with the, everything. Thank you. And then I researched the high and your numbers compared to the PA state average for diversity, okay? So, as you see, the red is predominantly, um, hold on, I think I missed. Okay, so this is actually orange and this is red. Sorry, it looks kind of red in the light, yeah. So, predom so predominantly, we see that the orange is the black community in the Norris, at Norristown, okay? And then the state average for certain schools for the black community is only 15%. Okay, now we move on to the blue. The blue is the white community. It's 23% at the North Sound High, at the high. The average, the PA state average, is 68. All right, let's move on to the green, Hispanic. I don't like to use Hispanic because I'm not from Spain, but whatever, I'm Latina, but okay. <laughs> so not, that's another topic. Um, so the green is Latinos, whatever, Hispanics which is 29% at the high, okay? And what's the PA state average in certain schools? It's only 10%. Mm -hmm. So what does it yeah. say? So here, the minority is white people. The minority is oh, white people. Just the whole, right? <laughs> <laughs> the majority are the minorities, which is, this is isn't awesome. That, isn't that, what do you guys think about that? It's it's like I just took like a bandage off your eyes, huh? Yeah, it's right? like really. Yeah, I remember. Isn't that how weird? How how 
what they think what normally is in certain PA um, schools is changing compared to us. I feel oppressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's Isn't that so, like, wow. Dude, they use it, they is so <laughs> diverse. You guys might not realize that because you guys are so accom accustomed to diversity, seeing all types of people from all different races. But once you're out of that and you realize the reality of things, that's not what it is. And it's strange, and you feel strange when you get into those, um, into those, um, uh, whatever, colleges or work, and you notice it's not as diverse as to what you grew up or where you grew up. You know, Norristown is really diverse. Yeah, guys. So you guys should be happy about that. Because you guys are the majority at Norristown not the minorities. So see, again, so the school diversity score in Norristown is 67, but the average in, in PA state schools is 51, okay? So the school diversity is, has stayed relatively flat for them, but not for us, not for Norristown. Oh, wait, can you guys wait a second? Okay. Yeah. Oh, he's going to take a picture? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, okay, he's good. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, it's really difficult to adjust to college life. Um, many of us feel uncomfortable, feel like we don't fit in in those types of community because of different cultural backgrounds, different levels of college preparations. Sometimes you meet people that you get the chance to talk to them and you're like, wow, he's so smart. And then you think about yourself and you're like, wow, like I didn't know half of the vocabulary he just told me. Or sometimes you go into school and be like, oh, what he's saying is really racist. Like, what should I do about that? And you, that's the reality of college. You, some people are racist and honestly, there's not much you can do about it. You just have yeah. to not retaliate in a violent form. You just have to educate. No retaliation, educate. That's what I do. I educate people when they say something that's not okay. And that's something they shouldn't say. So um, sometimes when you feel comfortable, um, if whatever, an institute or college, um, you feel comfortable because you sometimes lack the knowledge of available resources on campus. I was just mentioning to Devante that um, I didn't know where what was? The Lark, which is our... No, not the Lark. No. I knew about the Lark. Chill. The, no, you didn't. <laughs> yes, I did. She mentioned Chill. that she didn't know where no, the no, 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 area no, of our college was. No. I knew where the Lark Center was. <laughs> she did not. Oh, wait, no. The, um, for <laughs> tutors. I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, that's the oh. Lark. <laughs> I didn't know where yeah. the tutor and center was. And literally, when we went on our... When Westchester gives a college tour. They point it out specifically, so she didn't know mentioned. where it was, and now she found it out, and now she has a tutor. I'm a tutor for the Lark, BT Dubs for sign language, so throw that out there. Um, so we lack also confidence in our ability to be academically competitive and successful. So we notice other students. We're like, okay, he's probably smart. I feel like I'm not like I'm not gonna be able to compete with them because they were prepared for college and I wasn't. Their parents went to college and their parents, you know, spoke, um, like for example, the vocabulary they use is so different from like to what I grew up to. So sometimes I feel like I can't compete with them academically, but I'm wrong. I can't compete with them academically and sometimes I do outsmart them. Yeah. So and being prepared is key, guys. And then thinking about going off of that, oh, their parents saved money for college, whereas my family doesn't have the money to save for college. There's honestly always some type of resource. Like at Westchester, we have like a place. Some people at our campus have been like taking all the food from different places and putting them in like a fridge in like a universal area. So if you really need some food, you can just take it out the fridge and eat it. We have that resource. They give out free, they typically give out free like toiletries, like toothbrush, toothpaste, a lot. So just make sure you, if you need to find those resources, you go out there and find it. 
and so you don't feel like, oh, I have, I feel like, don't, so you don't feel ashamed, that's what yeah. I was trying to say. And then some colleges, they like collect dorm stuff from people who are leaving. Yeah. I know Lincoln does that, they collect like dorm stuff from people. You guys have till two, but if you finish early, you can. Yeah. Okay, we're almost done. Head to the auditorium. Okay. Um, so all these factor, factors contribute to low levels of self-esteem and difficulty adjusting to college settings. So they feel underrepresented in all these, and these are some just some of the factors of why. Okay. And just are we the change guys? Yes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we all have a voice. We all are. I'm, at least I know for sure that I'm really loud. <laughs> so we all have the power to make a change at our college. We all have the power to educate people when they say something problematic. We all have the power <laughs> to educate our professors because frankly not all professors are right. Some professors are really wrong and you, you need to take the initiative to educate them and make them know, let them know why they're wrong without being rude about it. Just have a plan. Alright, those are just some of the resources you can seek for help. Um, of course, FASFA. FIA is one of the biggest scholarships um, sites you can visit. Mm -hmm. I know I have a scholarship with FIA as well. Okay. So once you file for your FASFA, FASFA will ask you, do you want us to um, send your information to FIA so you can see what loans or what scholarships are available for you, okay? Um, college board, SATs, teachers, of course, are always, from my experience, are always the biggest resources for help.